industry that is moving more towards what regular banking is, which is having a lot of information available online, having a lot of things that you can do remotely without ever talking to anybody, but at the same time having somebody in the background that you could actually call and ask a question to, and following up with that is education about what the rules are, what you can do and what you can't do with your IRA. So with those three categories in mind, Jeff, if you would roll forward to the next page, um, account protection is the uh, the biggest and most critical one currently. So when you're looking at a vendor or provider of self-directed IRA services, ask them how long they've been around. What what sort of idea do they promote as far as their service? What do they do? How long have they been in business? Who are their owners? So I'm one of the two owners here of New Direction and I'm a CPA in Colorado as well. We got into the business because we we were very passionate about spreading the word. We had discovered self-direction as investors ourselves. Me and my uh, the co-owner, Catherine Wynn, had looked at why we couldn't, why no one talked about buying real estate in an IRA, and, and we discovered indeed that, that uh, you can if you have an IRA that is willing to, provider that's willing to work with you. So that's why we started New Direction, is to provide that service, but also spread the idea that you're in charge of this account, you can do what you've done best, and for Catherine in particular, she had done real estate and she knew how that worked. So the next question is, who's the custodian and where are they located? All of the providers of self-directed IRAs are working with a state-regulated entity, like APS was working with First Utah Bank. Some have elected to have a trust company of their own, which we have examined that possibility and we think they're good things about not being a custodian ourselves because that puts someone else in the watching the uh, watching the activities that we do bucket rather than just the state regulator who also can look at our accounts but they have the custodian who's looking at them as well. In fact, we do daily reporting to our custodian which if APS had done probably wouldn't have gotten into this situation because it's an amount of cash every day that belongs to all the accounts and that should be exactly matching what's in the bank and that clearly wasn't done with APS but it's something that our custodian requires us to do. So that's a good question to ask. Who who is it that's monitoring what's going on the, in the account? And how often are those accounts balanced? Well, really the only answer is every day because you have to know exactly how much money belongs to each account at every moment of the day and record it and balance it every night. There are things that come up that toss it out of balance, but those should be fixed by the end of the day. And who is doing auditing or overseeing those accounts? It doesn't have to be a CPA, but it needs to be some banking regulator or oversight person familiar with what they're looking at. And they need to do it either routinely every day like ours does, or, and included maybe, spontaneously showing up at your door. And that's something that can happen with us at any time. Our regulators and or custodial oversight folks can show up and ask questions. They actually have 24-7 access to all of our account data. To. So ask those kind of questions when you're talking to any potential um, IRA provider. And then how, do they, how does that provider communicate to you, the account holder? Like I said, it has gone from being you get something in the mail from the provider to having online access. So that the more modern trend, of course, is having online access and being able to update things online, including um, starting transactions is something that's become more and more popular and of course clients are requesting it because they want to be able to manage their self-directed account 24-7 and be able to communicate with that account. So those are some of the questions about account protection that uh, you should focus on when you're talking to a provider. And the next thing is account service. So one of the, one of the Details that is often omitted when you're doing a, and Jeff, if you would roll forward to the next slide. Um, how many, how hard is it to talk to a live person? 
So, of course, the goal of technology is to avoid having an interaction with a live person if you can do it on the web. But there are questions, and particularly with self-directed IRAs, you not necessarily know the obvious thing because you've never done it before. So you like to talk to somebody and just hear the answer, and that's really important, I think, particularly when you're just getting started is understanding what's going on. But even later on when you're looking at a transaction, having somebody to bounce an idea off of or see if it fits clearly within the rules or without, or even if it's on the edge. Sometimes that provider can point you to resources to decide for yourself whether whether or not that exact transaction is prohibited. And how quickly does it work? How, how uh, fast are things turned around? Uh, historically, things moved slowly because they moved through the mail, but nowadays, things are happening pretty quickly. In fact, one of the New Direction um, agendas or initiatives that we started a couple of years ago was to enable clients to be able to pay bills by going online, directing us who to pay, how much to pay, what it was for, and doing all that electronically so that data comes to our system and is processed currently either via ACH or a check going out usually the next day, maybe the, the day after that, but it's not two weeks out. So um, processing times have speeded up a whole lot in the just in the past few years, particularly for our clients. And convenience, our goal is to get to being just like you do with your Fidelity account or your local bank account where you can log on and do 95% of all you need to do right there online. So we're moving towards that. And that's something that our clients really appreciated, so that's probably something that you should ask any potential wow. vendor where they are in making things fast and easy. And then what kind of assets? Of course, if you have a LLC in your APS IRA, you want to move that asset over, so you want to make sure that whoever you're talking to handles that particular type of asset. For New Direction, we handle almost everything, and in certainly everything that APS had, so all of your assets, rest assured, could be moved to a New Direction account, but whoever you're talking to, make sure that they have some experience with that and whatever that asset type is. So make sure that it's not something that they don't handle routinely because even though they can handle it, doesn't necessarily mean they should. Okay, the next slide. I think education is one of the things that sets us apart from other providers, so be sure if you need education or if you want to be updated, then make sure that provider has education available and if they charge for it or not. We currently don't charge for our own clients continuing education. Um, as Jeff mentioned, we do some programs like the Law Line course for, for continuing ed for lawyers. We also work with a couple of universities here in Colorado and around the country to provide continuing education for CPAs. And in a wide variety of states, um, continuing education for real estate brokers as well. So a lot of that is live and in person or on demand or webinars such as this one that you're attending today. Good ways of distributing educational information. And just over the past few years, there's been more IRS focus on self-direction just because the number of people that have self-directed accounts is growing. So you want to be have access to something um, currently that is representative of all the new laws and new court cases that are coming out. So make sure that whoever you're working with provides that. Okay, and then the next slide. How does it work? So there's still some mysteries surrounding what's going to go on with APS and Equity Trust, which is the uh, provider IRS or the uh, receiver appointed provider for the APS accounts. So once the uh, actual forms are out, you'll have end up with by default an account at Equity Trust and the movement of funds from that account are going to depend on what kind of assets you have. Well just like when you initially opened your APS account, odds are most of you moved cash so the process is going to be the same. Opening a new account with the provider of your choice and then filling out a transfer request to send to Equity Trust related to the new account that they have established for you there. In-kind assets such as if you're 
IRA already owns real estate or has an LLC. A little bit easier and a little bit harder at the same time depending on what kind of asset it is just because there's more formal titling on those assets for real estate the, the asset needs to be titled in the name of the provider so ideally before equity trust records that new name if you're going to move away from them then we would want to do it as fast as possible so that we only have to change the name from APS to being the new provider. So, for example, if you were moving to New Direction, we'd want the titling to read New Direction IRA for the benefit of your IRA on that the deed or the titling for the LLC. So that's going to vary depending on what type of specific asset you have in your account. And for us, um, we have a client representative staff that's ready and able to help with that process and once um, the receiver and equity trust finalize their forms we'll be able to answer that question a little easier because uh, we'll know what the timing is and what exact forms and account numbers and so forth are going to be assigned to your account. Anytime you do a transfer remember that this is straight from your old IRA to your new IRA and never touching your own personal hand so there's no IRS reporting for a transfer from one account to another. Okay, next slide, Jeff. So how does it actually go? Uh, cash, just by check or wire from one account to the other, specifically with an LLC. And I um, actually, these are usually easier because most IRA-owned LLCs are owned by just a limited number of of uh, IRAs. So each of those IRAs with their percentage of ownership would just have to have a document provided and signed by the manager of that entity and by the former custodian which is either going to be the receiver or equity trust depending on the time frame and what they decide but authorizing the change of name from that title of APS IRA to a new direction IRA or whoever the uh, provider is that you choose. Titling of real estate managed by counties, generally the uh, tax and property division of the county. So we'd need to fill out a form, just changing the name again, signed by or executed by the former custodian to change the name into the new um, provider of your choice. Precious metals, if you happen to own precious metals in your IRA, they're probably at a depository. And they can actually stay at that depository, but again, just changing the title of the account at that specific depository. If any of you have uh, private IRA made loans that are outstanding, just need to notify whoever it is that is paying that note that the payment needs to go to the new IRA and also an amendment to the note just reflecting who the, who the lender is basically. So in, in effect, that account the payment stays the same, all the other details stay the same, but the name at the top of the page will change. Note too that some IRAs do have a specific tax ID number or, or a federal um, EIN employment identification number assigned specifically to it. And if you don't, then you probably have fallen under the general APS number. Um, the tax ID number for the IRA will follow that IRA. So if it moves from APS to New Direction, for example, it will keep that specific number. If it doesn't have a number, then it will switch over to the default number for that particular IRA provider. Most of the times we see an IRA getting its own tax ID number when it has to file a 990T related to unrelated business income tax. So if that is the case, then uh, you've probably already got a number and it would roll over with that uh, IRA to your new account. Okay, any questions out there yet, Jeff? Uh, not that I've seen. All uh, right. Remember, you can also raise a hand if you know, you're know you on a phone or something, I think there's a way to raise your hand and then you can verbally ask a question as well or you can type it in the question field. <laughs> so, no question, Jeff? Mm -hmm. All right. I've got a question though. Yes. What if their accounts are in a combination of these? Cash in APS's account, and maybe the rest in an LLC, or rest titled in, the rest titled in property? <laughs> Any differences there? 
Um, not any differences, but we'd need to do the the cache again is easy, just moving, just directing the, the old provider to send a wire or cache over or via check. The other assets, in addition to the cache, would just need to have the name, the titling change. So if you had any combination, you would just have to change the name of all the assets that are moving over. Okay. Okay, well, let's, so that's the, the big picture when you're out there looking. Um, I know from our experience with the APS receiver, they are making choices based on the safest from their perspective to be questioned by the judge. So they're not looking at the, the uh, when they had people, providers, in, including us, who offered to, to uh, help with the a APS accounts. They weren't looking at them as, as the, from the uh, perspective of an account holder. They were looking at it as a, from the perspective of what's the judge going to be least likely to question. So their choice of equity trust makes sense from that perspective because they're one of the bigger providers out there and they have in their past acquired some other accounts so they have some experience with it. So also they wanted to pick just one and that made sense from the court perspective but Remember, these are your accounts, so you have to be happy with the choice. And although they are apparently forcing everyone to go to Equity Trust, they're not requiring that they stay there. So and now's the time to be out there looking, where do you want your account to end up? And as part of that, one of the things that we've decided to do is allow any APS current account holder to open their account now and maybe they need to make your uh, or you need to make your 2014 contribution prior to April 15th you can certainly make that into a new account and it'll be ready and waiting as soon as the uh, receiver and equity trust come out with the forms and of course there's the 10% cash penalty that they're assessing for any account prior to allowing it to move so one of the things that's nice about having someone like Jeff to, to bounce ideas off of is he knows a lot of you and and the one idea that we've had is that some account holders might have sufficient cash to do it and others might not. So coming up with plans for those people that are running into a shortfall in cash, whether it's waiting for the private letter ruling announcement that purportedly will allow people to make contributions of, above and beyond the limit in order to get their account moved out of the APS account. So I encourage everybody to s stay in touch with Jeff and, and uh, see what the current ideas from other account holders are. But just want to move forward and tell you a little more detail about us. If you would scroll to the next uh, slide, Jeff. So as I said, we were established back in 2003 Catherine and I started New Direction and I still remember the day the first check came in and and uh, we were happy and excited and slightly terrified to figure out what to do but we passed that stage pretty quickly and from that point forward we have grown pretty much um, 15 to 25 percent per year and this particular year although we were not selected as the APS um, to handle the APS accounts, we did acquire some other assets from another provider who was getting out of the business. They That pushed us over a billion dollars in assets, one of the milestones that we didn't figure we were going to get to for a while, but the whole industry is growing so quickly that um, a billion came faster than we expected. We have an A-plus rating at the Better Business Bureau, and I think one of the most important things or one of my favorite things to brag about is the number of continuing education providers that we work with. So including CPAs and attorneys and C financial planners, real estate agents and brokers. Our mission is to spread the word about self-direction as wide as we can. Without telling people what to do, we spend our energy explaining and talking about the rules, what they can and can't do. And in addition, technology I think is one of our strong points we have created a new online bill pay in the past um, one of the features of having an LLC and the 
one of the benefits of having an LLC rather than keeping the money straight in the IRA is that it was faster to to write checks and things and also to receive money in. So we have gone the banking route of, of setting up an online bill payment so you can go in to your account and see how much money is in there and instruct us to send a payment out for whatever bill happens to be coming due, whether it's a property tax bill or HOA or a maintenance bill, all of those can be made online. With that, you can either send the receipt and documentation to us with that bill, you can upload it at the same time, or you can just keep it yourself, keeping it ready for any IRS audit that might be coming down the road. On the other side, money coming into the account has been a challenge as well, so we automated that, setting up an online um, contribution and rent or note payment system, so if you've lent money to someone or if you have re rental property that tenant needs to make their payment, they can go online and instigate it there, sending it directly into your IRA. And the same thing for contributions. So if you wanted to set up an account with new direction, you could do that via the online account application and at the same time start a contribution going automatically into that account. Online account access has been one of the biggest challenges for providers because there's there are things that go on during the day and sometimes those are not reflected. We are have just adopted a brand new system that allows for almost continuous update of what's going on in your account and it's available 24-7. One of our newest features is starting transactions. So as many of you are familiar with, starting a transaction was often a long drawn out process and involved lots of faxes and scans of forms. Well, all of that can be started for many transactions. Not real estate yet, but that'll be coming soon during this year. But a lot of that can be typed in once and it's online and it's ready. Push the button and that goes straight to our transactions department. So we're pretty happy at our progress towards being the fidelity like provider of IRAs where it's in your hands and it's in your computer and you can do most everything online but at the same time knowing that there's someone here to talk to not 24 7 but during our open hours and via email as well so I think uh, we would like to be your uh, provider of choice and are ready and available to uh, to work with any of you but keep in mind as you're looking out there there are a number of providers and they all are a little bit different, so encourage you to do your background checking and uh, make a wise decision. Of course, the account is going to end up at Equity Trust regardless of what you do. It's what you do after that that's going to uh, make a difference. Okay, next slide. If you I've got a couple of questions first. Um, okay. First question was, uh, client has not received anything from APS receiver, and you just wanted to confirm that yes, uh, Equity will take over the accounts, um, and then you can transfer to another custodian. You can't transfer directly from APS to New Direction, for example. Is that correct? That is correct as far as what we know currently. And yeah. again, that is more for the efficiency and, and record keeping of the receiver. So all of the accounts are going one place. They don't have to manage. Um, accounts moving to a variety of places. Right. Uh, another question, and I did the APS receiver poll you for participation? Um, I'm not sure exactly what that question is. If it, I know the the receiver did consider New Direction as uh, a contender to take over the accounts. Um, I'm not sure. So, uh, Steve, if you want to clarify what you mean by did the receiver poll you for participation, we can get that question answered. Um, another question, if Equity Trust steals our money, would the receiver be liable? Um, I probably can answer that, and the answer is no. Uh, the receiver is acting pretty much on behalf of a government entity, um, and they're not requiring that you keep your money with Equity Trust. Um, they're just going to sort of take over the accounts to handle the transactions, and then you have the choice to either stay with Equity or move them to a custodian of your choice. Uh, is, that, is that your understanding too? I mean, Bill, any other thoughts on that? Um, no, they 
everything that's going over is going over as part of, uh, like you said, the judge approved plan. And once it gets there, it's entirely up to you, the account holder whether it's going to stay there or move to another provider. Right. And the final question would be how your fees compares to APSs, but you probably might be covering that a little bit later. Um, yes. In, in general, ours are, are less depending on what kind of transactions you're doing, and I will cover briefly how those are, are set up currently. Okay. Um, just a little more background on what what kind of assets and what kind of accounts we can do. Go ahead and, oh. and uh, yep, good. Um, so traditional and Roth IRAs represent probably 95% of the accounts that we hold. Uh, Roths are growing just since 2010 when the conversion rules were tweaked so that more people could convert. Um, HSAs or health savings accounts are probably one of the fastest growing segments in the industry because of Obamacare and so many providers, insurance providers and companies are moving towards HSA qualified plans because it makes more economic sense to them. Um, so we're expecting to see a lot more HSA accounts and HSAs can invest in everything that an IRA can. So all of the, the uh, investment options that are available for a traditional IRA are available for an HSA. Uh, SEP IRAs and simple IRAs, probably 2, two or 3 percent of that other missing 5 percent. And then 401ks, most of which are um, solo 401ks or individual 401ks where the employer is the the owner of the company as well as the employee and there are no other employees um, and so all of those plans are going to follow the same set of rules which we're not talking about at this presentation but we'd be happy to have you attend one of our others that goes into the details of these accounts and the investments they can make. Um, primarily roughly a third of our clients invest in real estate and that sort of varies from day to day. Precious metals which are basically bullion based metals and also specific coins minted by the US Mint and are allowed for IRA investments. Been popular just because of the sort of economic unrest around people are worried about inflation and worried about the value of the dollar and historically metals have been a, a choice for parking money not making any current earnings from them but a store of value as they say. And private equity including single member LLCs we have probably 25 percent of our clients investing in something related to a private company whether it's a single member company or a small startup company or some sort of private um, organization. And then private lending as well with banks less willing to lend. We found that IRAs have been stepping up and providing loans for all sorts of things including real estate and other um, private ventures that someone needs money for. And then the last category is whatever you happen to be experienced with. So a lot of people are experienced with those first four items but we find people that have done some particular kind of investing and have done really well at it and with a self-directed IRA they're suddenly able to do that with their retirement funds as well. So whatever it is that you're familiar with doesn't necessarily have to be something that anyone else has ever done. So we're happy to talk to you about those kind of investments as well. And um, so when we back in um, July we came out and made a presentation along with I think there were a total of 16 other providers with regard to the APS accounts and basically <laughs> the word that sort of echoes in my ear is that the receiver said it was an auction and whoever was going to come up with the most money was going to be the one who ended up with the account. So that scared us a little bit because we figured we probably were not going to be the one with the most money even though we feel strongly that we're, if not the most, one, one, one of the top three or four most qualified to take over and help clients with these accounts. But regardless, we were exposed to what the process was and had the interview live and then a follow-up short interview after that the uh, receiver said that they had narrowed it down to three, I believe, 
and Equity Trust is the one they ended up picking. But we did learn a lot about uh, what was going on with APS and the relationship that APS had with, with uh, First Utah Bank and sort of highlighted the strength of our program of reporting every week and suddenly the obligation of providing all that detail to our custodian felt a little better because it provides a lot of value and comfort to the clients and also makes sure that we're paying attention internally as well. So what we came up with, even though we're not the selected provider, um, Jeff, if you would roll forward one, is a specific offer for APS clients. So the first thing is uh, the fee, which is typically $50 for a new account. We have waived that for any former APS account holder. And then we have our live client reps. We currently have six um, folks who answer the phone and answer questions. We're going to specifically train two of them with whatever forms um, the receiver and equity trust come out with so that we can help with the getting the money over to Equity Trust so that it can then be moved into a new account here if you decide to do that. And then the first year administration fee is going to be waived for all APS clients and that varies based on either the number of accounts you or the number of assets you have in your account. We have a per account fee which excluding precious metals or per asset fee of $295 per year or if you have metals, it is based on the value. Typically, for under a hundred thousand, it's seventy-five dollars a year for a metals holding. Um, so that's going to be waived for that first year. We're exploring the possibility of opening a local Utah satellite office. I think not only the attendees here, but quite a number of local folks need a person to stop in and see live. So we're actively planning to get that open probably before middle of the year and depending again on how fast Equity Trust and uh, the receiver work forward to get the forms ready. And then also we're going to provide free access to our library of educational materials including a lot of webinars and um, written materials that we will share with everyone. And then we're ready as of today actually to get your new account open one of the things that we've been working with our oversight folks on is getting the account open and as soon as the release is authorized by the court to be able to actually start doing some of the accounting for whatever assets you have while they're being moved. So we have approval to, for example, once the, the gate is open to immediately start receiving rents and making payments from the cash that is in your account related to the assets that are still at APS but moving towards the, a new direction account. So that is our current offering and if anybody has any questions about us or about picking a new provider in general, be happy to answer those either now or follow up. And this next slide gives you a, a picture of our homepage. If you wanted to visit and get your account open, there's a, a button. We actually have an online account application walks you through all of the details to get the account open. And um, generally is open before the end of the day. If not, then within 24 hours, in most cases. There are a few events that could pop up just that we have to ask more questions. So um, okay. getting the account open quickly is that. And then our contact info is on the last slide. Um, any other questions? Um, first, I know that um, yeah, you uh, for you know your IRA accounts, et cetera, you have an option of the fee structure, which was I think a little unusual compared to APS. APS charged both a small percentage of the value of the account and transactional fees. And don't you have a slight variation how you um, cover those fees? Yes, we we ha actually thanks for reminding me. A uh, two two choices with regard to how the annual fee is calculated. So most well probably eighty percent of our clients the per asset fee works out best. But if you happen to have a whole lot of smaller assets, you can have your fee based on the value of the account. And that's a percentage that 
it starts at um, 195 or 145, I believe I can double check, and then goes up from there. So if you have a whole lot of account or a whole lot of small assets, it's not going to be 295 per asset. And you can always choose which one works out best for you. And then we charge a transaction fee based on, um, for real estate, it's $250 for that whole set of signatures and documents that flies through the office related to a real estate transaction. For non-real estate, there's a $95 transaction fee. For bill payments and, and cash receipts, if you do it online, there's no charge at all because you're basically doing a lot of the work. And if you want us to process the paper bill that comes in from the, the, uh, the HOA, we charge $10 per check to for each check that we process manually. Okay. And I would encourage uh, calling their staff with those questions as well. You get a whole lot more details. Um, one of the questions was, if I do call with a question, how much tenure and training can I expect from the person to have? Um, I'll start by answering that question since my money is at New Direction. Um, I have found their staff incredibly knowledgeable, uh, very friendly. Uh, I've both called and emailed with questions. Emails get responded to very, very quickly. Um, and I have found the staff very knowledgeable. So, Bill, if you want to add anything about your staff and their tenure and training? Um, yes, we, of the six folks that are out there on the front line, um, I think two of them have been here more than a year, and the other six, uh, actually three of them more than a year, and the other three less than a year. We do have a, a rather severe, actually, training program, so a new person starts, it's going to be, in most cases, three months before they're on the phone. So we, unfortunately, can't find many people off the street that know about self-directed accounts, so we have to teach them everything that they need. And all of them are trained immediately if a question comes up that they're not familiar with. They have lots of resources, including me, to bounce questions off of and get the answer back to the client as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, another question. Just to clarify, we do not need to do anything to get the money into equity trust. Um, I'm not sure if we know the exact process at this point, do we, Bill? I mean, they'll essentially take it over. And I, there, there probably might be some forms to sign or do something, I would imagine. As of last check, which was as of this morning, to double check and see if nothing, if anything new had come out, the, curiously, the equity trust site says, well, you'll either have to do nothing or you'll have to fill out a form. But in any event, it's probably going to be pretty easy. The process is being driven by the receiver who has to have everything approved by the judge, but once that happens, then they are actually going to send everything to Equity Trust as soon as that 10% uh, cash deposit has been made back to the receiver. So from my, my understanding, whatever the value was of your account in April of 14, 10% of that is going to be ha have to be deposited to the receiver. And once you do, then that will raise the gate so that your account can move over immediately to Equity Trust. Also, uh, some indication that they are going the receiver is going to continue to pursue other collection sources, including the assets of the former owner of APS and potentially insurance companies and the First Bank of Utah to try and recover that 10%. If they do, then that money will go to your to your IRA. One question that we have is, if you have moved to New Direction, for example, will they make that distribution out to New Direction? Because they are taking 10%, and the actual loss was only around 6.7% or so via cash. Um, so they are taking some cushion, partially to pay the receiver fees, but I would hope that some of that 10% is going to come back at some point. Okay. Uh, question, I'd like to open a new account but don't have a job. I'm retired. How would I do that? I'll answer that quickly. You don't need a job to open an IRA account. Uh, you would need some sort of business structure to do a 401k. Is that correct, Bill? Some sort of business entity set up to be the solo 401k or do you have to just have money? <laughs> you do have to have a business to form an, a uh, 
or create a new 401k and ideally it has to be a real business but there's not really a <laughs> definition of what the real business is yeah um, you can open an IRA account today you can always open an IRA account um, you can't necessarily make a contribution to it if you don't have earned income but any existing IRA that you have can be rolled into that new account okay um, question how did I get connected to New Direction um, uh, I essentially first I said this at the beginning I, I essentially met Bill through continuing legal education courses that I have to take for my licensing and of course since I use my own retirement and self-direction and I guide a lot of my clients through it um, I really I sought out that that course from Bill learned a ton in that course and I had been in, in the game for a couple of years um, and then researched, I had some money, APS, and luckily I was able to get mine out, uh, long story. Uh, and, but when it was, when the freeze happened, I started researching other custodians, talked to Bill's staff, um, opened an account, had numerous conversations with Bill himself about APS, what happened, why it happened, you know, how I could protect my own assets looking for a custodian. And then I just made the personal choice uh, to go with your direction. So that was just, that's what I did. Um, Barbara Dunbar. Hi, Barb. You've got a question. I'm going to unmute your microphone. So if you want to question now, Barbara, you can do that. Okay. Just my question is, when do we need to have this done by? Maybe you've already addressed Barbara, if you could maybe get closer to your mic, because I can't hear you. Okay, where's my mic? I there don't you have go. My mic. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, I'm saying, uh, you may have already addressed this, but when uh, does this take place? By what date do we have to have this done, transferred, if we were to do that? There's currently no date, because because this is being driven by the court. There's no time frame, and, and because they're doing it as a transfer, so it doesn't, the move to equity trust will be a transfer and not reported to the IRS anywhere. So whenever they get all of their forms ready, it'll happen. And then if you wanted to subsequently move to New Direction or some other place, then you would do it as a transfer as well. So there's no time limitation. You can try out um, or wait until it happens, move it at your own convenience, or you can go ahead and get your potentially or a future new account open with New Direction or any other provider and start putting new new contributions and new funds into that new account and then have the amount from APS be moved into that existing account whenever they get all of their ducks in a row. Yeah, and there's okay, so I, okay, go ahead, Barbara. If I decided to um, go with uh, New Direction instead of equity, of course, like you said, there was a you have to make like two transfers. I just wanted to be able to pass by equity if I needed to do that. And yeah, it looks, looks like you're not going to be able to bypass equity. It will be sort of a seamless transfer of some sort to them. Oh, okay. And then you'll direct them to move the money. Correct? Okay. Correct. Your, your new contributions and new activity can bypass equity by via opening your new account before the move happens but the assets that are currently at APS are all going to have to go in some manner through the equity trust process. And as, okay. as all of you know, uh, because you do have money with a self-directed custodian, that process can take two to four weeks. Um, so, you know, when I, when I teach uh, using uh, retirement money in, in self-direction, um, you know, I always tell them to plan it, plan ahead, um, set up the accounts, get them open, uh, so that when you are ready to kind of make the move, it, it's a much more, much more efficient and quicker process. Um, so it's just kind of my, my recommendation is, is, you know, you can get things set up and then, you know, if you do want to move over, you can get things set up. And then as soon as, you know, the day equity says, okay, you can move money, then you can move it. And it'll take a couple weeks from there. Uh, any other questions? 
So far, I'm not seeing any questions. Right. Let me add one more thing, uh, just in case someone wants to go and open their account right now. We have created a uh, code, a discount code, for people to enter in, which will waive the the new account fee, like I was describing, and it is um, APS Move 15. So just type that into the uh, code coupon code box on the application again APS move M O V E 15 and that will automatically waive the fee for you and indicate that you are a APS client that's coming over uh, Bill do I have the, your permission to include that code into because there's probably a, a 10 or so clients who have money at APS who are not online now um, that are on Absolutely. our email list okay sure. And as soon as the presentation ends, you're probably going to have some additional questions pop up. So just let either me or Jeff know or send a uh, email to info at NDIRA and we'll get back to you as quick as possible. And we'll probably also include Jeff so that he'll have the answer available for anybody else that asks. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing any more questions. And so we will thank Bill Humphreys uh, for his time and uh, great explanations. Again, he does a lot of teaching in this. He's just really good. So um, we're going to sign off. Uh, hold on. Oh, one last question. Can an account be opened without funding? Sure. Yeah, I thought so. Yep. Yes. So, yeah, you can get your account opened up, and then when ready to move, you can move. All right. Uh, we're going to end uh, this webinar. Again, we'll send out an email to everybody with a link to the, the recording of this webinar so you can review it again. Uh, and I'll, I will put the code in there for the discount. And if you have any questions, you can let me or Bill know. Thanks, guys, and thanks, Bill, uh, again for your time. Oh, thanks for having me, Jeff. Okay. Go out and enjoy that weather. <laughs> we will do. Thanks. <laughs>